Hello and welcome to Infinity. Have you ever wondered how hue is calculated? If that sort of thing is, is not your bag, then that, that's OK. But though it is going to be quite simple in this, this, the numbers are only coming towards the end. So it'd be kind of interesting to follow along anyway. So let's see. So overall, hue is calculated based on the way that it, it's displayed, which is in a, in a colour wheel, which I've always found quite fascinating that you, it literally goes around and comes back on itself. And uh, it's measured then because of this sort of circularity of it, but with a, an angle. Um, so a naught is put at red. Why uh, not? Could be somewhere else, but that's where we start. OK. So then overall around it means that uh, the hue value can anything between naught and 360 degrees, though within a computer it's often held as being between naught and one, in which case you measure things like here, it's 60 degrees to go to yellow. So that's the value, if you like, of yellow. Uh, but if it's a naught to one measurement, then it will be something like 0.16. So let's have a look at this on Infinity Photo. What we'll do here now is to actually look at these separate channels. So we'll go to the Channels tab here. If I turn off the green and the blue, then we see just what the red channel is. And this is already being quite interesting because what you get here, there's 120 degrees here where it's solid red. And there's 120 degrees here where it's black. In other words, there's no red. And either side is another 120 degrees stuck into into two uh, 60 degree angles in which it fades from one to the other. And now if I add the blue, the blue is down here. Again, you're going to get the 120 degrees. If I turn off the red, you can see it's the similar sort of pattern. But up here, you then get the overlap between the two. So in here, you got the red fading off, but onto solid blue. And up here, you got the blue fading off onto solid red. And unsurprisingly, if you look at the green, it's going to be something similar. So if we go back to our colour wheel here, then we can see it like this. Same thing. And we're going to chop it up like that. And we can say this is of value 1 up here. And this is of value 0 on this 0 to 1 scale as opposed to, to 0 to 360, but effectively representing the same thing. Then in here, you've got fading. So in here, it goes from 0 to 1. And in here, naught to one this way. But if you go clockwise, this goes backwards this way from one to naught, then from naught to one this way, which will cause a bit of a problem, but it's not the end of the world. So green, similarly, you've got the same sort of thing, and blue. And why these circles are getting smaller? Because we're going to put them all together. So we start off with the red one, add the green one, and then add the blue one. And the reason to do this is so that we can actually divide it up. This is divide and conquer sort of thing to get some sort of value which says, where are we on the wheel? And what we do is if you start with the one here, we notice in this first segment here, then it is red is always one, blue is always zero and green goes from naught to one. So we could say, ah, let's take a look that we've got this extra color wheel around here and Let's divide up the segments here between this one, call this one naught, this one one, this one two, and so on. So in the zero segment, well, the value we're going, to, we're going to give is between naught and one. And then in this segment here, it's going to go from one. We've got all the way up to one here. So we'll keep going just for now. And now this could be one point something. But because this the red here is now the varying one, because blue is zero and green is one, which tells us we are in the number one segment, then we have to make this backwards. So we take subtract this from one. So it's one minus it. So this is then naught to one. And then this is going to go from one to two. Then this one here, now the, the fade goes the normal way and blue there. So it's going to be from two to three. Again, we just take the two and we add in this one here and so on all the way around. So we can calculate it then by saying we take the segment number, which is this number around the middle, which we determine by simply looking at the which are the ones, which is the one at, the, at one, which is the one at zero. There's going to be one at one, one at zero. And those combinations are 
unique to each of these and tell us which segment we're in. And then we add the fade, but we will think about the fade in a moment. Multiply by 60 if we want to turn it into 0 to 360. And we divide by 6 if we want to turn it into 0 to 1. And simply this star here says when the segment number is even, then here, so it's 0, 2 and 4, then we're going up there from 0 to 1 on the fade one. But in the other one, it's backwards. So on the odd numbers, it goes backwards here. So I get to take one away from that. And that's how we do it. Let's take an example. Here we just got one pixel with red is 0, green is 1, and other one is 0 0.4. And if you look on this, we go, where is the, green, the red is 0 and the green is 1? It's down here. Yeah, red is 0, green is 1. So this is going to give us our measure here. So blue is 0 0.4, it's 0 0.4 around here. So we're going to add in the 2 to the 0 0.4 and gives us 2.4. And then if we multiply by 60, that will give us an angle, which is 144 degrees. Or we could divide this by 6 to give us a number between 0 and 1. So what you can say then is to calculate each segment. So this is the sort of thing we start to get some, some programming code, but this is sort of what's happening. So you turn this into code in whatever language. So if red is 1 and blue is 0, then hue is green. For that's for this one here. Red is 1, blue is 0, so the hue value goes to that. So if green is 1 and blue is 0, which is this one here, then we hue is 1 plus, but the red is going to invert that red to go the other way around. It's 1 minus it. Then the next one, if green is 1 and red is 0, which gives us this one here, then we add the 2 to the value here, the 2 plus the blue, and so on. We just repeat those for each segment, and this then can be turned into programming code to give us a number. What we're also going to do then is do any conversion there. So if we're converting to degrees, we'd multiply the hue by 300, by sorry, 60 degrees to give us 300, uh, you know, not 360 value, or divide by 6 to give us a 0 to 1 value. However, there is another problem which is that in pixels you don't have one right at the bottom you don't have one right at the top except sometimes but not always so a lot of the time they're in the middle so we have to figure this one out and what we do is we chop this area up where they're varying and we say that the lowest one here this is like the zero and this one here is like the one and then this just this little bit of value in here is like the faded one and so we've got, it's going to be in this segment here where green is the maximum, blue is the minimum. So rather than naught and one, we're looking at max and min now, but it's the same thing effectively. So we then work out using this. So the 0.5 minus 0.4 is that 0.5 there minus the 0.4 gives us this value here for the red. And we divide that by the gap here, which basically scales this. So this means that the faded value is going to be between 0 and 1. And then for the others here and here, rather than 0 and 1, we're using min and max. So we can then calculate that out. And so this is 100 degrees, this value. So more generally, you say rather than 0 and 1 in the calculation, we're using minimum and maximum where the minimum is the literal, the lowest value here, maximum is the maximum value here. Then we scale up the third color like this. By the way, just a point to drop in here, which is that when all three are the same thing, the max and the min are the, exactly the same, and this is monochrome, and then which came in the case, there is no hue color. In fact, we say hue is undefined, right? It does not have a value at all because we're dealing with monochrome, which also in, in when you're doing code, you have to watch out for. So up here, we've got max minus min, which is this range here. Here we've got red minus min, which is this one here. And so we can scale it to get that the value here as if this was 0 to 1, 
with red minus min over max minus min, this over this. And we can use this generically then in calculations. So calculating from this then, we'd start off, We this is where we gain, it's this sort of pseudocode, where you got the mx is the maximum, maximum, mn is the min, and then this, if you say like the color range is the difference between those two, which is this gap here. And then we do the calculation in the same way as before, but now we're doing these simply as the proportion there. So red minus min, which is going to be for that segment, if red was in the minimum, then divided by this max minus min. And so you do the same like this and produce your code to show this calculation, which is fairly simple. So this is actually doable in terms of programming. There's enough space that you can do it quite, you know, relatively easily. And then finally, you can then turn this into code and you can do some more arithmetic and jiggling around and so on. So this is an example simplified basically from, if you look at the easy RGB uh, website, then it's got a, a, a section of that which shows you how to do this. And you can cut and paste this or adapt it into whatever programming you're doing. And anyway, well, that's it. I'm going to do another one at some point uh, as well, covering the other things apart from hue, which includes things like saturation, luminosity, brightness, whiteness, chroma, and other stuff. But that's enough for now. I hope that was interesting and maybe made a bit more sense. I, I certainly found in doing this myself, I learned more. So that was good. Thank you very much for watching.